We're born into this planet without choice or reason. We grow up slowly learning and experiencing events that shape our perceptions and beliefs. We grow attached to some things and repel others. We meet friends, lose some, fall in love, get hurt, then pick ourselves back up again. We experience a wide range of emotions, from joy to sadness, and angst to excitement. In our current society, the digital age of monumental progress and change, we are experiencing the best times of humankind, but we're more lost than ever. Technology and the general advancement of humankind has led us to this. Most people no longer have to worry about food, shelter, or staying alive. On top of this, we don't have a job to fill or family roles to inherit. We have freedom, and freedom is scary. We dull our intense and unpleasant feelings and emotions, which is easier now thanks to entertainment. We can now easily dull our senses, passing time in a numb, sometimes blissful, mostly saddening state. We are not meant to live like this. Our bodies and minds scream at us for doing this, but it is also part of our evolution, as these things were once scarce. We evolved to crave certain things as they were harder to find, and we naturally want what is comfortable and easy. Unless we absolutely have to change, we don't want to. People like me who grew up with shaky self-esteem look to answers for these problems so we can fit in. I got hooked into self-help and self-improvement, looking for someone to answer my prayers to find meaning and hope in my life, because I felt insecure in myself and my decisions. This led me to be attached to others' opinions, which was mostly unconscious. It's a sad way to live because I felt hope and a sense of control for the first time in my life but it was dependent on someone else to give it to me and for me to follow along. Success, money, fame, being great at something and sacrificing for a cause sounds amazing, especially when we're told we can make it and we are special. But eventually the illusion fades and wears off. Like I did, the cycle can continue on to the next thing or idea. Thoughts such as, what's the point? easily creep into doubt-filled people like me, and that's a huge, tough question to tackle. If I had a better body, the ideal one I want, would I be happy? If I had financial security and a girlfriend, would I be any better? Or would I be the same person, looking for the next hit to keep me going, never satisfied? So is it wrong to wish for more? What life is there to live is if there's nothing to fill it and no one to share it with? Or is the answer becoming a monk and cutting away from everything? If it is fame, will that be enough? Or is it an endless pursuit that the more fame we get, the more we want, and the less satisfied we are, then we have too much money and time, so we numb out the feelings and tell ourselves, oh, maybe a bit more fame and money will help? Or is it in giving up everything and taking the spiritual path, abstaining from desires and reaching enlightenment? Sounds like it could be beneficial, But isn't the pursuit and attachment to that just as unhealthy? Our attachment to these things and ideas or identities is what causes us pain, yet it is also what makes us human. It helps us experience and differentiate activities, people, things we do and don't like. But these attachments cause conflict, because where someone identifies with one thing, someone else is with the opposite. So everyone wants to believe that their way is the right way, and that they are part of the most righteous group. But what is the point of this we're in and you're out game? It'd be easy to stay the same, blame and judge others. But is this any way to live? There's such an incredible depth to life, so much we don't, can't, or won't see. So enjoy it, the pain and misery as much as the excitement and joy. I know it sounds insane, but there will be pain, so why not be prepared for it? It's all one and the same. Without two sides, there wouldn't be anything. Happiness needs sadness, cold needs hot. For one without the other, it wouldn't mean anything. So we can only do our best today, even though we acknowledge it might not actually be for the best, it's our best guess. We can listen to our emotions, see what they say, what they are trying to signal to us. We can accept our egos and realise we are imperfect creatures. I know I certainly am. But we struggle to see that in others, in our daily lives. People have this huge depth under the surface and are only showing a small part of the top of the iceberg. As we only show a small part of ourselves to others, 
as so much of it is unconscious or indescribable or just too private and scary to share. All we can do is accept that, laugh at the ridiculous nature of life, of ourselves, and try our best to be a good person to others and to ourselves. That is one of the hardest things in life. Any skill can be learnt and practiced, but to be a good, virtuous person is an ongoing and never-ending process. The only thing we can do is live today as best as we can. No answers are the right one. None are wrong. They are only the decisions you've made. Yes, there is cause and effect, and that's part of learning and adjusting our behavior to fit into society and to find the life that we want. So, even if it hurts, all we can do is live. Live today.